Hey, it's Heather, and welcome to the weekend episode of Adventures in Gardening. This is the end of week 25, so like we're like halfway through, almost halfway through the year. This is when the days are the longest, and I, I just love this time of year. I love this month, and there's so much going on, so um, I have a lot to tell you about today. So the garden is just blooming with so many beautiful perennials. The echinacea are just starting to come in and my sister gave me a teddy bear sunflower that is blooming and it's the cutest little thing. And I would not have picked it for myself because I always like the really giant sunflowers, but this one's like a branching one and it's short and it's cute and, and I have it planted in a barrel and it's just, it makes me really happy to look at it. Um, this week, was it's been just so busy i've just and i i love that it's been so busy so this week was my first dahlia of the season it came into bloom um, a beautiful pink one i can't remember its name it's my goal this year to get them all tagged again um, but i was so happy to see it when my dahlias start to bloom it's like seeing old friends again it, it, i just love it um it was also this week that uh I found the first monarch caterpillar on the milkweed. The milkweed, by the way, is looking spectacular. I've never seen it look so good. I've got the um, the the tall common milkweed out there, um, and also uh, I've got the um, the tuberosa milkweed, uh, orange that I planted from seed two years ago. No no caterpillars there yet, but this week I I gathered the caterpillars that I found and I set up my enclosure so that I could take part in their life cycle. And if you're interested in monarch butterflies and monarch caterpillars, I, I encourage you. I, you know, I made this video that I'm like, man, this is like, it was, to me, it was one of the most important, important videos that I ever did. And I think 85 people have watched it. And I'm like, oh my goodness, it was just, it was fun to make and it was years in the making. So, so much footage of the years that I've been helping the monarch butterflies along their way. So I will link below. And if you get a chance, uh, go ahead and watch it because the more people that, um, that plant milkweed and know how to help the monarch uh, butterflies, the better. Um, so, uh, just a few weird odds and ends this week. Uh, I've spent uh, a lot of time kind of going through the different rooms of the garden and, um, you know, it, I get busy and some places I just never, like, it'll be like, it seems like, you know, weeks that I get to go through again. And I, a male ilex was blooming, the, the, uh, the one male ilex that I have and uh, whose job is to pollinate all of the other ilex. And man, that guy was an overachiever. I've never seen so many blooms on, um, on this particular plant before. So I thought I'd share that with you. Um, this week was my last week for picking the scapes off of the garlic. So if you are a garlic grower and you have scapes, now what's a scape, Heather? Well, a scape is what looks like it's going to be a flower. It's a stalk that comes up and like goosenecks over. And if you leave it on your garlic, um, it, the energy goes into that bloom instead of into bulking up your bulb. So even, even if you don't plan on eating them, you really should take and cut them off. But if you don't eat them, send them to me. <laughs> they are so delicious. Now we've been eating scapes um, off of the garlic for quite a few years and I've always roasted them. And for some reason, the family kind of has become bored with it. And I'm like, well, what am I gonna do? I had like 85 scapes that I picked in one day and I got an email from Fruition Seeds with a recipe for garlic scape pesto. Oh my goodness. It is the most wonderful thing I have ever made. I probably will never roast the, um, the scapes again because it was so good. So, so I, this is, I loosely used their recipe. Um, so it is garlic scapes and a little bit of basil. Okay, so the ratio is, is a lot less. 
um, of basil versus the garlic skate. Um, sunflower seeds, Parmesan cheese, uh, lemon, and I think that was it. So the lemon helped it to keep its color. I am telling you, this stuff, I will be planting more garlic just to make and freeze this because I don't think I can live a day without having it. <laughs> it was that good. It is that good. So this is what I have and um, I shared a little bit of it with my daughter and she says, I'm going to need a whole lot more of that. It's, it's so good. So it really let the flavor of the scapes shine through and I think roasting it kind of mellows the flavor of the scapes. So, yeah, last week of the scapes, they're all picked and the garlic is coming along nicely, probably looking at, you know, the second week of July for harvesting it. I did some carrot thinning this week and then when I plant my carrots, I do not thin them when they come up. I wait until a little bit later. Um, I take and I dig my fingers down along the greens and, and when the ones that are close together, I'll just start plucking them out and, and then I have extra delicious carrots, even if they're small. But the carrots, it's going to be a great year for carrots. I cannot believe the, how they're sizing up out there. Um, so I have been, I have spent so much of my time picking berries. Strawberries were phenomenal this year and gallons. I picked gallons and threw them in the freezer to make jam for a rainy day. Plus I also um, ate berries every single day, strawberries every single day. And now I am picking the black raspberries that not everybody loves the black raspberries. Um, I totally love them. They tend to be a little seedier. They're, 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 not, um, they're not blackberries. These are black raspberries. And this is like the wild, the wild ones. And I just, I, I've had them in the garden for, for a long time. They have great flavor to them. And um, so I just started picking those. They don't, uh, they have no shelf life. So you gotta pick them and you gotta eat them. So I'm having them every morning in oatmeal right now. Blueberries are just coming into their own, um, fighting the birds for the blueberries. We have a huge bird population here, which is a good thing. But, you know, I spend a lot of time shaking my fist and get out of my blueberries. <laughs> um, it's tomato. Um, the tomatoes take a lot of my time this time of year. They are coming along beautifully. I, um, I for all of the big um, the bigger, larger tomatoes, the medium and the large tomatoes, I grow them on a string. Um, this year, instead of one liter stem, I've decided to let them branch and do two. Um, there is a variety that's new to me this year called Thorburn's Terracotta that I can't believe. It's, it's, a, it's a medium to large tomato um, in the orange color, terracotta. Um, and I can't believe how many tomatoes on are, are on it this early. So I spent a lot of my days um, wrapping around the string for support and also looking for uh, suckers and taking the suckers off. Now, um, on the medium to large tomatoes, you do take the suckers off. I do not take them off on cherry tomatoes. Well, on the ones that are down low, I don't want the suckers to be too low on, to branch on the cherry tomatoes, but um, not everybody wants to prune them and that's okay. It is my way. I want, um, I don't like a big jumbled mess on my large tomato plants and I like large tomatoes on those plants. So if you, um, find a leaf. So you, you have your main stem and then you have your leaf and then the sucker will come off in between and I just pick them off and I throw them in the garbage. I do not compost tomato leaves. I have spent uh, a lot of time this year really enjoying my shade gardens. They look fantastic. Dare I say I probably shouldn't say it. I'm going to say it anyway. There, there's really not a lot of slug damage. <laughs> Next week I'll be like, oh my gosh, the slugs. But my shade, the hostas, and all of the other shade plants really look fantastic this year. Um, so I, I have a few areas on the outskirts of the property that are shady and I've built them up over the years and they filled in really pretty. So I'm, I'm in love with shade garden plants. 
and I like, I like walking through them every day. So the hostas are just starting to bloom right now and they're just, uh, they're looking really, really nice. So I had a big project that I wanted to do this week and when I'm going to do something that could be slightly dangerous, I don't tell anybody that I'm going to do it because, you know, just in case it goes bad. So I have, over the years, I have planted things um, to problem solve, okay? Um, and then as it matures, it really isn't working out so well and I'll just change it. So no big deal. But I planted this American Arborvitae some years ago and um, at the time I had a reason for planting it because I wanted the privacy and I love evergreens. And it overgrew onto the only path that I can bring my lawnmower up and down safely from the lower yard to the upper yard. I have a self-propelled Honda lawnmower and it had overgrown so much and plus I had been pruning it. It had overgrown onto the path so much is what I meant to say. But I had been pruning it to keep it like manageable and when you try to do that with something that is naturally a, a sh going to be a huge um, you know, tree, it starts to look really wonky and it was starting to look like a Muppet and it, it just did, it wasn't attractive anymore. And I'm like, Oh, but I really love it because I love to use the greens at Christmas time. And I had to have a serious talk with myself. What exactly are we trying to do here? Because it just didn't work in the landscape anymore. And yes, I will miss the ever, I will miss the greens at Christmas time. But, um, so, I used my little baby chainsaw, my little tiny electric chainsaw, and I'm like, you know, it, it, it was really big. It's bigger than what it looks like in the video. And um, I'm like, I've seen my dad and my husband do this like so many times, you know, they will use like rope and a ratchet and attach it to the top because I didn't want it to fall down the hill. I wanted it to come up the hill. And I'm like, well, I don't have rope or a ratchet, but I've got garden twine and I can tie it to the deck. And so um, I made sure not to video that part because I didn't, in case things went really wrong, I didn't want my husband to replay it over and over again at my funeral. Uh, and this is, this is where she went wrong, you know. Uh, so anyway, it all went fine. I did get the chainsaw stuck once and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna, how am I gonna explain this? But um, anyway, I figured it out. I got it down and I hate it. I hated it. I hated the thought of it. I hated, I hated it instantly. And yes, it's going to help me in the long run. And um, yeah, so I need to just plant something else there for right now. But the, that is done. It is all chopped up and, and composted right now. So that wraps up my week and I would love to hear from you about what's been going on in your garden and um, some things that are looking good or projects that you're working on, leave me a message below. Thumbs up if you've enjoyed spending time with me today and uh, subscribe if you haven't already so we can stay in touch and you don't miss out on the next adventure in gardening. See you soon.